Hey guys, Booligan here with Booligan Shooting Sports, taking another dive into the world of 3D printed firearms. The last one I did was a Ruger 1022 style receiver with a cool little Ruger Charger pistol build. This one is an AR-22 style AR pistol build as well. How this came to be um, was based on a lower receiver design for full caliber um, AR-15s uh, put together by Deterrence Dispensed called the U-Bolt Vanguard Lower. That thing's very strong, very beefy. You can print one of those suckers out and run 5.56, run 300 Blackout, run I've seen a lot of larger caliber versions of that. Me, I tend to like 22, ammo prices being what they are, and also it's a little bit of a lower risk build. Uh, you're less likely to have a catastrophic failure with something chambered in 22 long rifle. So what I have done is I modified the file, I remixed it, if you will, by shrinking it down in certain ways, um, getting rid of the U-bolt attachment system for a buffer tube because for 22 caliber ARs, in general, you don't need a buffer tube and um, designed it to have a uh, Picatinny rail molded in or, or printed in, if you will, at the rear of the receiver so that I could mount a brace. This brace, we'll get to that brace in a second. I originally ran one of these and posted it uh, with the caption, you know, life uh, finds a way um, because you can't stop the signal. The files will always be out there. Um, and one of my friends was like, man, I love Jeff Goldblum. I love Jeff Goldblum. And so I printed a second one. This one with the picture of Jeff Goldblum telling you to be quiet and selector markings that are a little hard to read, but life uh, finds a way. Fantastic little detail. It's just a little plus for me to truly personalize this and make this my own. But in general, the receiver on this prints very easily. Um, it takes about a day or so and about three or four, maybe five dollars worth of filament depending on your current filament prices. You drop in your standard AR lower parts kit, um, everything installs pretty easily, and then it utilizes a standard upper receiver. There are 3D printed upper receivers. I'm part of a beta group testing out some of those designs, just haven't really got the files tweaked to where I like it yet. Um, and it is fitted with a CMMG um, drop-in uh, AR-22 conversion kit. Um, this one isn't actually a conversion kit. This one is a, a standalone, excuse me, CMMG uh, kit with a CMMG 22 long rifle specific barrel. There are the CMG, CMMG conversion kits that you can drop into any AR. I don't like those that much. I want to go with a actual proprietary and standalone barrel setup. Um, so this guy is running the four and a half inch barrel front end. I needed a handguard of some sort and I sort of like this whole like machine pistol style look that this thing has. Um, so I designed and printed this hand guard, uh, which is like a nice angled hand guard here so that you can, you know, kind of maintain a good positive grip. It has a hand stop up front to keep your fingers intact and it's open on the sides. You can see right here um, for a couple of different reasons. One, this barrel is threaded and I do have a suppressor so that way I can still access that to remove the uh, thread protector from the side and install my suppressor if I'd like. And also, it looks damn cool. Look at that. I mean, that's a very cool little front end there. Um, up top, I, the upper receiver on this looked like trash. It was just a garbage spare receiver that I had in my box of stuff. And the anodizing was coming off and it looked like just absolute garbage. Uh, so I designed and printed out this nice little filler piece here just to kind of smooth out the top um, and then fitted some uh, airsoft uh, Evo sights uh, from ASG and nice like kind of fiber optic front sight and adjustable rear. And I actually really, really like it. it. It's a nice little sight picture. So on its own, uh, this thing was quite nice. You know, fits the hand well, very lightweight. Um, but obviously I like to, whenever possible, um, add another point of stabilization. Pistol braces are an excellent way to accomplish this. Um, and I put the rail on the back so that I can add a uh, 1913, um, an FS 1913, I believe is the code name for it, um, brace from SB Tactical. 
those things cost like 180 bucks and you can never find them in stock. COVID kind of hit their supply chain hard and you couldn't get it. So I designed a brace. Um, the brace that I designed, there are no set rules. There are no like set guidelines from the ATF as far as what makes a brace a brace and what makes a stock a stock. There are some highly recommended things that you can do. Um, and, but it is always kind of going to be a little bit of a risky or a little bit of a gray area. Um, so if you are designing something like this, definitely err on the side of being conservative with things like length of pull. Uh, ATF has recently slapped down a couple of companies, including Q, for having a length of pull that is too long, 13 and a half inches from the trigger, extend that, to the end of the brace. If it's over 13 and a half inches, that's basically a straight train to uh, your brace is now a Stockville and you are going to prison. Um, or at least getting some spicy cease and desist letters. This guy's like 12 inches, super, super short. Um, you don't want to make this too wide because obviously the wider it is, the easier it is to use as a stock. So the ATF doesn't like that. So this is a narrow little guy. And I included a strap, uh, the strap. You can quickly pull it out. It's held in place with a little bit of elastic right here, but you can quickly deploy it by pulling this little tab right here, pull that down. And you actually have a very nice loop with which to slip your arm, holds it against this. In fact, I'll go ahead and deploy that really quick to give you an idea of how to use this as a brace. So as you can see, it fits the arm, it fits that, and you have a very nice third point of contact for this, not heavy, this thing's certainly lightweight. I think it weighs like three pounds altogether. Um, but still a nice comfortable point of contact for sort of an awkward to use pistol otherwise as this brace. So there you go, very nice brace set up there. Um, and it folds up nicely. I designed it the hinge. It uses a pin off of an Airsoft G36 um, because it's what I had. And then it just, you know, screws through the side. Um, it locks pretty well in place. It's obviously, this is polymer on polymer. It's not going to be the most stable thing in the world, um, but it locks pretty well in place for a version one um, of this thing. And then you just sort of lift it and then fold it back in place and it stays in place well but I designed the hinge in a way that you don't have to lift it again. You can just pull it out and it kind of locks back in place. So um, overall, that's sort of how and why I did this thing. I like fun plinkers. I like the design challenges of coming up with things like a little you know, handguard here with an angled grip to keep you from shooting your fingers off and, and adding fun designs to your uh, you know, 3D printed receiver there. I like the design challenges of those things and that's why I do projects like this. And if I could do it in 22 long, which is something that in general is very inexpensive, easy to shoot, and just a hell of a lot of fun at the range, absolutely will do it. Uh, before anybody asks, I have not released these files anywhere because I do this stuff in general for my own personal use. Um, I'm not a part really of any of these uh, groups that do big, um, you know, dumps of files and design work and things like that. I just kind of do these because I get bored and like to design fun things for myself. Um, so I'm gonna get that question a lot and I don't have download links for them anywhere. Sorry guys. Um, but if you can learn to design, which is really not that hard to do, uh, you can design and print some awesome stuff like this yourself. So we are going to have a field trip video where I take this and a couple of my other new firearms, including some of my other 3D printed ones. I'm gonna take them to the range and kind of put them through their paces, see how they work and kind of give a little demo of how all this stuff goes together. So uh, thanks again for watching, for subscribing. Um, YouTube somehow, somehow has not completely demonetized my channel um, and rev the YouTube revenue is actually up a little bit, um, which means that I can afford to put together more fun projects like this because parts kits, that CMMG bolt, CMMG barrel, that stuff costs money and uh, this is all just a hobby for me. I don't make money off of this. so. Um, anytime I'm able to do that, anytime, you know, you guys watch these things go a little bit viral, it's kind of nice. My last 3D printed one has taken off pretty well, so that's why we're looking at this today. So, again, as always, thanks to you guys. Without your guys' support, views, uh, we wouldn't be able to do any of this stuff on the channel. So, um, stay tuned. We'll have more videos of these and some other fun projects, um, including one very, very cool Form 1 integrally suppressed barrel for a bolt-action 45 caliber rifle.
that'll be coming up soon. You'll like that one. Um, but yeah, many thanks, and uh, stay tuned for the next fun build.